What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Weekly Buzz this week. I'm your favorite host, Didi. And this week, we have two special guests. We have Jazzy and we have Miss Kathy. And as always, Chris Knight from the Counseling Center. It is great to see everybody back. We got a special episode. We asked Kathy Mink from Recovery Services in Northwest Ohio to join us. She's going to talk to us about Overdose Awareness Day. That's going to be coming up here on campus on September the 3rd. So stay tuned. We're going to talk all about Overdose Awareness Day. But first, we'll get some special interviews. Yeah. So first, we have our new host here, Ms. Jazzy. She's going to be a great addition to the Weekly Buzz. Welcome, Jazzy. So... Jazzy, where are you from? I'm from Genoa, Ohio. All right, where is Genoa from? It's like 20 minutes away from Toledo. Oh, not too far, though, by the lake. from here. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Well, welcome. Thank you. So, what brought you here? Um, I thought it'd be fun, a fun idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> we do have some fun on the show. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. So, like, outside of this, what other activities and stuff are you involved in on campus or that you want to be involved in on campus? Um, well, currently I'm involved in the band and the music program. Um, I also, off campus, do a lot of shows and plays and musicals um, over with the Fort Defiance players. Um, yeah. And you were just telling us... Off air, you just addition, addition, auditioned. I can't talk today. I cannot make the words. <laughs> you just auditioned today for a play. Which one did you audition for? Uh, Annie. Annie. It's a musical. Well, fingers crossed. Yeah. Everybody go out, support her in Annie coming up. Yeah. yeah. So what made you decide to want to be a part of the Weekly Buzz? Um, I don't know. It just looked like it would be fun, and I needed more on-campus things to do. So, yeah. And <laughs> we are excited to have you joining us here on the Weekly Buzz. We've got Kathy Mink from Recovery Services. Yeah. Uh, so what is your role at Recovery Services? I am the Prevention Coordinator for Recovery Services, which basically means I provide and facilitate prevention education in a four-county area. So myself and I have a team, I have some staff, um, we primarily go into schools, K through 12, and we teach substance use prevention curriculum, and we also do a bunch of other ones, like we have some that focus specifically on certain substances, and then we have a resiliency one, we teach life skills, um, and then the newest one that we're going to teach is um, sexual abuse prevention. Um, and aside from that, I coordinate a lot of other things. I coordinate, um, I myself speak publicly um, at events and teacher in-services and board meetings and every like committee and advisory thing in the area I'm probably on. Um, uh, I do drug-free workplace trainings for companies and factories and things like that. And so um, the bulk of what, what I do is um, young people, but we do speak to some adults as well. We work with juvenile probation, with JDC, um, schools, community, all of those things. You are a busy person. I yes. We appreciate you taking time out of your day no, today I to join this. us. I love this. Okay. Um, how did you get involved in the area of addiction and recovery? So prior to this job, I, um, well, we'll go back a little bit. Um, I was a, a teacher for about 15 years. Um, I did preschool with Head Start um, for 15 years, and then um, I kind of had a little trouble in my own life. I, um, my mother had passed grief. Um, Grief is a terrible thing, and grief sometimes leads, unhealed grief leads you down paths that um, are not good. And so I struggled with alcohol for a while and um, had some other things happening in my life, some trauma that I never dealt with, um, and uh, I got myself in a little trouble. And so um, I took a break from teaching, just more so because I needed to find my own peace and to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And when you're in that moment of, of brokenness, I mean, it se it feels like you can't do what you always did. And so um, I took a break for a while and I did some other things. Um, I was like getting kind of nervous that I hadn't found something yet. And then I found um, this job and I knew I was qualified for it, but I didn't really know what it was. I know that's crazy, right? So I <laughs> applied for it and um, it turned out that it was, um, you know, substance use um, 
so recovery services is mental health, behavioral health, and addiction treatment. And so there are four offices that provide treatment. There's an inpatient facility for women. There's now transitional housing for women. Um, but this job, you know, when the CEO interviewed me, she was like, uh, you need to grow this program, whatever that looks like. And I was like, that's pretty open-ended. I mean, <laughs> if you're just going to let me go, like, wow, this is going to be great. But, um, but one of the reasons I feel like I was led to that was not only my own struggle um, with um, substances and trauma and things, um, I also, um, my youngest daughter, who just turned 18, um, she, um, her father passed away from an overdose um, several years when she was 10 years old. So I know what it feels like um, from a family perspective, from personal perspective. Um, the one question that Ruth Peck asked me in my interview, she said, um, how do you feel about the people we serve? And I was like, hmm. I said, well, I am the people you serve. And so therefore I know that I know how I want to be treated. And so therefore I can do the same for somebody else. And so, and as far as, you know, my daughter's dad goes, I always wondered like, if I knew then what I know now, would I be able to help him? Um, I don't know the answer to that, only that now I can help as many people as possible by educating them. Yeah. And is there anything in this specialty that you're particularly passionate about? Um, you know, I would say just prevention as a whole is to be, is to provide like, um, better choices. And as a kid, I don't feel like, I mean, there weren't these kind of pro programs when I was younger. And so I feel like if I can, you know, um, share what I know, my own personal experiences, as well as what I know to be true and build relationships with people in general, then, you know, we can encourage everyone to make a better choice I mean because this I mean I always say like the world's like on fire you know what are we going to do to put it out I'm always on the end of um, complaining is one thing but what is the solution like what are you going to do so what am I going to do um, I just want to promote like better choices for kids but honestly the um, the overdose part is really um, something I'm passionate about because we're losing so many people and we're losing yeah. kids and you know it's just very scary so and that's you know that you bring up a lot of really great points and you know kind of that goal of overdose awareness day it's twofold we want to stop overdose you know by increasing tools for recovery and provide that message of hope in in recovery there is hope out there but we also want to honor families that have lost loved ones to addiction um, and overdose. And we want to reduce stigma. So yeah. stigma is like a the belief about something. And so um, often in um, addiction and drug use, whatever that looks like, there's this belief that people are flawed humans, that something's really wrong with them. And the point is, is know that they're human. This can happen to anyone. Like yeah. I tell kids in schools, it doesn't matter where you came from, what your zip code is, what your parents do for a living, what you do, if you're in sports, if you're, you know, um, academic, like it, none of that matters. It doesn't matter. I think that is so true. So let's talk about Overdose Awareness Day. That is coming up here. Um, do you got a little history on Overdose Awareness Day, kind of the history of the program? Sure. So Overdose Awareness Day is an international um, awareness day. It's the largest awareness day for overdose. I um, mean, it happens across the, all over the world. And so um, it's August 31st every year. Um, and it's just a way to um, spread awareness, educate the community, and give them, like you said, like, what can we do to help, like, as a community? And, and it affects every single person in the community. Um, what can we do um, and to help? And, um, and also reducing stigma. So um, these events are carried out all over the world um, on this day. Um, there is a website, um, and you can go on there. It's overdoseday.com, and it has just thousands of stories of testimonials of people that have lost someone. And then also there's like this giant map on there that tells where the events are in all the areas of, of the country and the world. And so it's really interesting to see, you know, there are many, many people that, you know, want to do something about this. And so, um, but being that it's August 31st, um, this year it falls on Labor Day weekend. So I'm actually involved in planning um, three of these events in three different counties um, 
and Henry and Williams and Defiance. And we just kind of decided that each one decided that that day might be a little difficult to get the most people there. And so that's why this one in Defiance is on September 3rd and some of the other counties are um, on different days as well. Um, to try to get, you know, because really when you go and talk about this stuff, you want to hit the, the most people. You know, because one person tells another person and then another person. And then, you know, it's just a domino effect and that's really what we want. And we're excited to bring this to campus. This is the first time partnership between the Defiance Drug Free Coalition and Defiance College. Um, so we're really, really excited to be partnering with you and bringing this to, to campus. Now this is awesome. I mean, we're just so um, honored to, to have this opportunity to do this at this beautiful campus. And I mean, it's central really in Defiance. Um, and people, everyone knows where DC is, they do. Um, and so I think that it will be a really great location. So tell us about the day of the event. What what's what do we have planned? So the day of the event, the event um, is from four to seven, um, and so I'm actually going to kick off the event. I'm going to speak a little bit. I'm, I think I'm kind of going to be like the MC a little, um, and just share a little bit with welcoming everybody to you know what we're doing there. Um, we have some fantastic speakers lined up um, to talk, and and they're very different. Um, there's some that are in recovery. There's some that have been in recovery for a long time. Um, there are going to be moms there that have lost um, their children to overdose. On, and um, There's one particular, I just talked to her the other day on the phone, and she is really powerful. Um, her name is Tina Pruitt, and she, from Defiance County, lost her son um, in 2020. Um, he was 22 years old. And so um, she speaks a lot about fentanyl and fentanyl poisoning. And um, so she's, I'm really looking forward to her, yeah. you know, and, but there, we have so many in variety. Um, also, there's going to be giveaways. Um, there, some of the things that we're promoting in the giveaways are like, there's a t-shirt, there's uh, doTERRA bags. And if you don't know what doTERRA bags are, they are a medication disposal bag. So you put the medication in it and you put some water in it and you shake it up and it disappears. It's a safe way to dispose of medication. Can't just throw it in the trash. Can't just dump it down the sink. You know, this is the right way. Um, there's medication caps that lock. Um, there's bags that lock. You know, those are good for travel if you have prescription medication. Um, to make sure that you're, the person that's supposed to be taking it is taking it. Yeah. Um, there's also going to be um, some other like giveaways um, at the tables, the resource tables. So there'll be a, in the room, what is it, the banquet hall? Yep, the Hubbard Banquet Room. Yeah, there will be resource tables from agencies from around the Fort County area, really. I think we've got um, about 12 different agencies planned yeah, for the event. Treatment, um, mental health, behavioral health. Um, there'll be you know, some public health things there. Yep. So it's just a way to give people information because a lot of times people will say to me, I didn't know where to get help. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. And so hopefully this will be a way to get the information out. And then um, sometimes when I go and speak at events, you know, and things people will say, well, I, I don't really have an issue with that. But there might be somebody in your family or your neighborhood or on campus or somebody that does, and then you will have this information for them to give. So um, aside from the speakers and the resource event, there's also um, some memorials that will be going on. There's going to be there's a QR code that will take people straight to a website and they can upload photos of their loved ones that they've lost um, and tell a little bit about them. We're going to print those off, frame them, and put them on a table beautifully to be displayed. Um, we're also That's saying great. I'm going to pause just okay. for a second. So where would they find that QR code? How because we want them to, to upload those pictures ahead of time. Yes. How could they get to the so, QR code? Um, so that we have some social media posts um, on the health department um, Facebook page and then we're encouraging everyone to share them so if you see it share it um, so other people will get that information um, there's going to be some newspaper ads that are going out um, we got some funds from the Adams board to provide some advertising and so Great. those are going to be every Saturday up until the event and so that QR code should be on there as well um, I believe that they can navigate also to that site just by going to Defiance County Health Department website. There would be a way to get in there. Um, and then, you know, 
they can email. Um, Taylor's yeah. here with me. She works at the health department as well. She's the coordinator of, of the coalition. And so um, there would be, there's all kinds of ways um, to get that information to them. So Ooh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, and we are also endorsing that if people um, have loved ones that wrote poetry or artwork or things like that, they can also submit those things um, to be displayed. I think it's really powerful to see, um, you know, there are so many gifted people out there and we don't even know. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes these gifted people um, leave us um, yeah. before their time and for something like this. So, um, and then at the end, we're going to have, oh, there's going to be food trucks as well. Um, and then uh, the dining hall here on campus yep. has agreed to food service um, for like, um, I'm excited about that because I always hear the food's really great. So The food know, is yeah. very good. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and then there will be a memorial at the end where we will um, have something to give people to take home with them. Um, to uh, It's planting flowers at home. Um, it's a little, uh, if you've ever seen them, like paper um, seeds on a paper. I've had pets that have passed that yep. they gave them. And it was like, you know, just um, a beautiful way to remember somebody. And so um, we're going to read names and have like a moment of silence and... It's important to say their names. It's important to share who they were. And that's if the families give permission to do so. So, and I think, I think as a whole, there'll be a lot of connection there with um, not only people that have experienced this type of thing, um, but also those of us that are working in the field. And I mean, it's great to be able to talk to people and hear their stories. Yeah. You looked like you were going to say something, Dee Dee. I didn't want to cut you off. No, I totally was, and then I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, oh sorry, no. I was long-winded. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're totally be okay. Such a, a powerful, impactful event, and you know, you, you as a social worker, Dee Dee, I think it'd be great. You know, to encourage your classmates because we want to encourage all students on campus come mm-hmm. check this out. This is going to be a fantastic event. We're going to have lots of folks from the community joining us for for Overdose Awareness Day, September the third. I'm putting the shameless plug in from four to seven. And it's going to be in Saint, in Sarah Hall over in the banquet room. Uh, but you will find us. You'll see all sorts of signage around. Um, how big of a problem is overdose in Northwest Ohio? I think it's kind of one of those invisible things. If you're a family member or if you've had somebody that's been impacted by it, you certainly know all about it. But how big of an issue is this? I think, um, you know, if I had, you know, even a nickel for every time somebody said, well, that doesn't happen here. I hear that a lot too. (laughs) Um, It does. And I think sometimes what happens is if you haven't been directly affected by it, um, you know, yet, unfortunately, yeah. that sometimes you believe it's not happening, but it really is happening. I meet often with law enforcement, the man unit. Um, I just talked with um, Police Chief Schaefer today. We're going to meet um, in the upcoming week to kind of, we kind of get together and like go over what's going on and what I should be sharing with people and what's, you know, some of those things that are happening. And I can tell you, in our area, it, it's very much a problem, yeah. um, and it comes in a lot of different ways. Like, um, you know, there's illicit, there's illegal drugs, there's fake prescription pills, and definitely for this college population, um, one of the leading substances that um, overdose occurs is fake prescription pills. Um, things that are laced, most generally laced with fentanyl. I mean, I tell kids all the time, like, the days of experimenting are over. You can be sure that fentanyl is in just about everything that comes out of the street. So um, that is a problem in, you know, across the board, but for your college population, um, you know, the the Adderall, the, those sort of things um, are an issue and yeah. being produced fake and um, being laced with um, a deadly, deadly drug. So as far as Ohio as a whole, I mean, I think, um, you know, statistically, I think I had read something that said from like, I think it was 2019 till 20, um, I'd say 21 or something. It was like 18,000 people in Ohio had um, experienced overdose. So um, on a smaller scale, I think maybe I read like in, you know, and it's increased. So in the last year, it's like Mm -hmm. a 5,000 so it's kind of what I was seeing with some of the yeah. numbers was it's about 5,000 annually in Ohio that we lose now, um, I to overdose. Also, um, just from January um, of 24 until um, like early July, in defiance is 34 
mm. people. So that's not all fatal. 34 lives that we've lost. So, well, not all were fatal. Okay. But um, I don't know the exact number of fatal, but yeah. 34 overdoses, which means 34 where response had to come, where Narcan was used, you know, that sort of thing. And so um, that's a pretty big number when we think about it. So if people are thinking it's not happening here, it most definitely is happening here, which that was something I, I did forget to share that there will be Narcan distribution at um, this event on the third, a little bit of education, and then um, people can take Narcan home with them and carry it. I carry it all the time, my staff do, my family does, my daughter, one daughter lives in Columbus, she carries. So um, yeah, it's definitely, that's one of those things that as a community you can do as well. We were really fortunate last year uh, to have some of the Narcan boxes installed on mm -hmm. campus, so we're real happy yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, and reducing the stigma around it because it really it's it's about saving lives. Yes, that's really yes. what we're trying to do here. I've unfortunately run into some people that um, are confused about Narcan and, and walks alone, and they're like, "Oh, doesn't it promote drug use?" And I'm like, no, 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 that's a myth. That's not what that does. Um, and plain and simple, I'll be as you know simple as possible. Is if um, we can't treat people that aren't alive, and so if we want to get treatment to people, we want people to get better, and and um, be in recovery, then you know something like Narcan saves lives. So and recovery is possible. Yes, it really is. Definitely. There is hope in recovery. Yes, I've seen it a lot. I've seen yeah. a lot of um, people in recovery that have extensive, crazy stories. I mean, things that you're like, I, I would never imagine that only happens in the movies. And mm -hmm. I've heard things locally of people have recovered, and um, it's amazing. I just think all too often we hear about the ones that don't, and then we kind of, you know, get the idea that it's not, hap but recovery is possible, it does happen. Absolutely. All right, what questions do you guys have about the event or overdose awareness? Um, what are like the most obvious signs of overdose? So overdose, it kind of depends, you know, um, like on substance, but um, overall, um, it can look like a lot of things. Like most people are thinking that overdose is like somebody just passes out and you can't wake them up. That definitely is. Um, but it can also be um, like, um, you know, a weird like gurgling sound, like almost like snoring. Um, and so you might think someone's asleep, but then there's that. But definitely the unresponsive um, is, you know, um, an, an a definite indicator. Um, sometimes um, skin turns colors like yep. gray almost. It's kind of a weird sort of look. I know um, you look at me like, I'm, you know, but no, um, I have seen people in active addiction um, that, um, you know, their skin is almost like a gray color and, you know, that can also be an indicator. Um, mm -hmm. There's, you know, things with the eyes. Um, so there's just a lot of different um, but often, I think we just really need to understand that it's not always that somebody that like falls over and they, they're passed out. Like right. it can look like a lot of different things. We'll get some great signage up, look around campus, and you'll see that, you know, it's that difference between drunk or intoxicated and overdose and kind of knowing the different signs. So look for those around campus. Um, and you know what I always tell students too is, I know you know, sometimes the notion is I want to protect my friend, right? I don't want to call you know, campus security, I don't want to call the police because I don't want to get them in trouble for using something and it's kind of expanding that notion of protecting, right? I want them to be alive, I want them to be okay so that they can be part of this community. Yeah. Yeah, I've talked to people that have, um, in fact, one of our speakers, um, she lives at our Serenity Springs house and she told me the story of um, finding her friend um, who had overdosed and um, you know, like that, that immediate, like, um, what do I do feeling? Yeah. And so I always share with people like call 911, call, call somebody because yeah. number one, um, even if you are a Narcan carrier, you still should call. Um, but also, you know, um, if, if you've never seen that and you don't know what to do, like, please, please, please call someone. Um, my kids in schools, high schools will say that to me, like, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Yep. I don't want to get in trouble. Um, and my, always my response to that is, you know what, I would rather somebody be mad at me for a couple mm -hmm. of weeks or whatever that looks like than have to go to their funeral. So, yep. 
I totally no, agree. Would you rather be in the no. dean's office right. or the funeral home? Right. Yeah, no, Short I agree. Yeah. I don't know. There's, I learned so much from you today. Like you talked about so many different things, and I really enjoyed it. Oh, well, cool. I'm always available. You know, <laughs> hang out with me. We really appreciate you coming on today, talking about Overdose Awareness Day. It's coming up in just about a month, a little less than a month, on September the 3rd, here on DeMiles College's campus. But it's a community event. It's a collaboration between the Drug Free Coalition. The whole community is invited. We want you to come in, check out all the vendors that we have, learn about overdose, reduce stigma, and help support families who have lost a loved one to overdose. Sure. Hey, thank y'all everybody for tuning in to the Weekly Buzz this week, and we'll see y'all all next week. Stay tuned, everybody.